I am Demetrius Marx, but almost everybody knows me as God, the mechanic. We, me and my brother have been, been doing this mechanics and electrical and fabrications from about 2002. You know, coming out of high school, we started to do it at the same time. And coming all the way up to now, we have done multiple, multiple fabrications, multiple conversions and, you know, you name it, we can do it. It's a full in-house custom shop, you can, can call it that. We, after doing fabrications for years, we, we started to turn into tuning about 2006. We started to you know, mess around with Super AFC, the Grady e manage the popular ECUs. We used to mess around and after being bored, you know, after being bored exploring all of, all of the choices in, in uh, like Toyotas for example, we started to look into a wider array, started to try different cars, started to do Mitsubishi, started to do Nissan, started to do Hondas, and then found a love in Mitsubishi, where the, the community for Mitsubishi is very supportive. We chose that path and started to go that route. You know, going into this was not an easy task, it was a major challenge. We, we had a lot of, a lot of, we don't call it people like, laughing after us, saying that we can't do this and we can't do that. And that is what gives us a fuel. So getting that fuel from back in that day, we, we know that you know, there's nothing that can stop us. So my brother, we push along and we started to you know, set some records in, on the street, uh, street racing. You know, we, used to, we used to do as young youth growing up, we used to go on the street and get a few challenges here and there. And, we lose some, we win some, and then the joy starts to come in when we start to separate ourselves by beating our competition drastically, you know, setting some really good records. You know, so that, that's an introduction of me. So I'm the builder, the electrician, the tuner for all the Mitsubishi. I, I would say 80% of the Mitsubishi in St. James or Western Jamaica. That's me. So, once I hear about Western Jamaica, and you see a Mitsubishi in Western Jamaica, my hands are already touchy. Trade Boost Engineering is located on the top of Providence Heights, I am so, Montego Bay, St. James. So, yeah, right with the only garage on the top of the hill, on the school, you know, on the side of the, the, the main road. So, that's Trade Boost location. You can also find us at Boost at yahoo.com. You know, we are also on Instagram, we are also on Facebook, Straight Boost Engineering. Yeah, I've been racing um, for, from 2005 professionally, when, when Jam West was just started around that time. Uh, I went, I had a Toyota Starlet, GT Turbo Starlet to be exact at that time. You know, that was a bone, it was a stock setup, but that is where I found, I found the love of the sport. Yeah, so from that time till now. My biggest rival right now would have to be Mr. Rafik. Mr. Rafik and I have, have, um, have a past. You know, so we have unsettled, um, we have unsettled differences right now. And we're looking forward to, to see that meet. Whether, it's be, whether, whether it is um, qualifying, Grudge match elimination or during a race, no problem, I'm ready. <laughs> most uh, memorable moment overall in drag racing was the time when me and um, this Bergen the Camaro we, 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 we went to uh, Vernon Field, I was the underdog all the cameras over, over on the Camaro side all the attention on the Camaro I, I waited on the line you know, patiently no RPM, no anti-lag, no noise just waiting on the line like a, like a little sheep <laughs> and you know after the light went green, you know, I, I, I know that I disappeared. 
and I did not see him at all in my rear view. Coming in the pit lane, I realized that I had done something that was undoable. And that for me was unforgettable up to, up to now. So that was a 10.4 pass, if I went line. It was a 10.4 pass at that time. I think it was at 139 miles per hour at that, at, that, at that track. He actually ran a faster time than me, but because of my quick response and the, the brutal acceleration of the Evo 3, could not catch me back. My car is a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 3. It's a family four-door saloon, as the whole world should know. I when I when I when I race it um, up to the up to 2017 when I when I used to race it, it was a full interior, street trim, AC, everything works on the car. And I used to run at, at that time it was a two-liter engine. But coming from there to now, the upgrade is no longer street street um, driven. It's just for, for racing now. I took out the air conditioning. Still have the, the interior inside. Um, it's an all-wheel drive. The stock gearbox, the stock transfer box with a modified rear diff. Um, I'm running a 2.3 litre stroker now. Uh, 8.5 to 1 compression. In the cylinder head, it's a, it's a stock port head. No, no machining done. It also uses... Um, I'm using the, a comp. 259 cam uh, actual duration. Uh, I'm running a Chinese turbo. It's a Chinese GT 3582R with some custom work to the exhaust housing and the downpipe. My brother and I we did the full fabrication of the intake manifold, a full fabrication of the exhaust manifold. We're running a custom intercooler and piping, and we are running it right now on ethanol fuel. We're running the mixture around 89-90% ethanol. We also, we also use this fuel on, on the street, so we don't use a record to bring the car to race, so we drive the car. So driving the car to race, we still run the ethanol all the way up there. The car is tuned on the street, it has never seen a dyno. Never ever seen a dyno. This car, um, I've tuned this car like between 11 to 1 o'clock. Um, I mean, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. This car is being tuned on the, on the road. We tuned this car for like... This car hasn't been tuned since 2017. Yes, 2017 was the last time my laptop was plugged to this car. From that time till now, that car, this car has been dropping at 10.4, 10.5 ET. Uh, always consistent at 139, 140 miles per hour. And Knowing that this car has never seen a dyno, I can't tell you how much horsepower it has. I can only give an estimate. I use a virtual dyno to simulate how much horsepower we're getting and the torque figure. So that is how we know if we're gaining or losing power when we're tuning the car. We're also running a stock ECU. This ECU is from an Evolution 9 MR. So stock ECU, we, I build a base program uh, with, a, with, a, with a little help from research. I've been, to, I've been able to break through some barriers that this setup would normally cause um, trouble for other people. I've, I've break through that barrier. So this computer is fully controlling the ethanol fuel content analyzer. It's controlling the boost. It's controlling the traction. And it controls the fuel remarkably. We're running FIC 1650cc injectors. Uh, running a fuel pressure probably about 50 psi. Give and take will increase or decrease the fuel pressure if seen necessary. But ultimately, we try over the years. Um, experience has taught me not to not to try to trouble the car. And every 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 race meter go adjust and try to change this and that. We try to test the car before race meet. Make the adjustments at that time. And when the race meet comes, we run the car. If a part break, if I have the part, replace it at the race meet. And if not, we call it a day. So. For that reason, you will see the car come out and we'll maybe break a diff or break a transfer case and the car will retire for the day because we're not going to bitch up a part on the car and try to run it and flap ourselves. If a part breaks, 
We stop, leave it for another time, and we go again. So I've learned that over the years. So patience is really a virtue. Well, my biggest challenge now is the workload on me at race day. Because I represent, I represent almost all the Mitsubishi in St. James. So when we go to race, we have like six, seven, up to eight or nine cars racing. And all of them are Mitsubishi. Now, if one or two of my guys are having, a, having an issue, I cannot pay attention to my car. I have to be helping them so they can go out there. It is very challenging as a racer and a mechanic to go to a race. And you have a few cars coming out of your camp and you go after the run up and down back and forth trying to fix everybody's car and then come back and drive yours so that is uh, to me the most major challenge i ever encounter and it happens almost every race meet so the only way to try to break away from that now is to imply a strategy of letting the guys know say hey listen you need to test your car before race day or else race day come i ain't gonna help you you know, it's, it's, it's called tough love, yes. My best AT was uh, recorded at Jam West. It was 2000, it was November 2016. Uh, yeah, I think November 2016 when I went, I got my slicks, them brand new slicks, first time being used and I put them on the car. I did about four test pass on the track just to get the feel of the rubbers and, and come back around and put in some fuel, did not trouble the tune, did not do anything. This car was a street driven car, drive on the track, put on the slicks and I went down the track. After the testing I did, it was a 10.4 at 141 miles per hour, I can remember. The 60 foot was poor, it was a 1.7 60 foot, you know, you know, not used to, I wasn't used to the, the, the slicks as yet. So I didn't get a, a real good launch on the car, but that was a bit the best ET I've ever done. After that, racing at Vernon Field, uh, my best ET at Vernon Field was a 10.4 same way. And the 10.4 at Vernon Field, the car was still having a little issue with fuel running away from the, the pump. And I launched the car, if you watch a YouTube video, you see the car bouncing, that's the fuel running away and coming back. But since then I've added a fuel cell to eliminate that problem and that fuel cell now since installing I really haven't get proper testing on the car on a race day so we'll see how we can lower this time coming forward yes so coming up to, to this race meet and race meets coming forward it is it is um for me, it is important to be reliable, and that has been an issue plaguing, plaguing me for a little while now. Since the, the power of the car has increased, I'm breaking the stock parts, and, and the stock parts are, we are seeing the limits of the stock parts. So, we're looking forward right now to implying different strategies like using a Magnus slipper valve to help you know, cushion some of that torque, down, torque loading on the, on the drive chain. So, Te more testing and, and more racing, we're gonna know what we can, how far we can push the stop, stop gears and the stop drive chain to the end. For the end of the year, not thinking about going nines, I'm more thinking of staying in the tents and being competitive and having fun. After, after we can prove that this car, this platform is reliable, then we're gonna try to push it some, some more. But not looking at nines for this year. For drag rivals straight coming up, you can, we can expect a very competitive um, straight boost camp coming out with uh, as much as possible cars. At the same time, we are going to make sure that we have a reliable car running this time. So my fans can look out for, for me coming out and being reliable. My fans can look out for me winning. There is no misshifting going to happen or anything of that. I can promise myself that. So my fans can, yes, definitely go ahead and start the betting from now. Definitely will be dropping some time and kicking some... Well, first of all, I have to big up my, my main sponsor. Um, it's Bookwiz Bookstore, a.k.a. Mr. Watto himself. If it wasn't him, you know, all, all we're doing would not be possible. 
So, Mr. Mr. Leroy, big up yourself. Um, also, we have to big up TK's cellular repairs. You know, that, that guy helped help me with a lot of research. You know, a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes action to help me with. I have to also big up my brother. You know, from the years coming up, any fabrication you can think of, my brother can do it. Whether it be welding or not. Any fabrication that you see on TV or wherever, we can do. So I have to big up my brother for that. So we make things where people say impossible, possible. So my, 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 I have to big up all of my support, all of my friends, them, all of my customers, them, all of my, all of my race man, them, and behind the camera. Away. <laughs> so I have to big up for all of them. Everybody support me. When they come out, when they come out late, 12, 1 o'clock at night, all of them be there support me. They park, them park up on the highway and wait till we don't know where I do. You know? So, I have to big up everybody. You can call some name. I have to big up Anjo. I have to big up Soupy. I have to big up Dalton. I have to big up Thompson. Now nah, I big up my dog, but I still have to big him up. I have to big up Sean. I have to big up Rowan. Rowan is my brother from another mother. I have to big him up the same way. I have to big up... You know, I have to I have to big up a steel pan man, same way, with the Mark too. You understand? I have to big up a sentiment them. You know, you know what I said? A different note. I have to really take time and big up a sentiment them because during my racing, these guys were one of the few people who recognized me during racing. And them go out of them way from all the way to the south side, St. Elizabeth, and bring them car come here. So they knew them have an ever tree, almost identical to mine, same color, same trim. And they bring them car come to me, you know, not knowing me and them, them be with me over the, over the years. And we, we, we basically accomplish a lot together the same way. We have a big up sentiment them. So we have support near and far. So big up everybody who support me over the years and leave it at that. First and foremost, I have to call out Mr. Xavier Murray. And why I have to call out Mr. Xavier Murray is because this man, to me, is a founder of racing in, in, in the whole Jamaica. And we have to call him out, not on a note, say, yo, we have to call him out to beat him. And we have to call him out to make you, for make you know, say, there are still people out there who have not known him. So, me, if you come to Jamaica, so the crowd is bigger than Vernon, and where the support is larger. Come to Vernon, Mr. Xavier. Next man, we have to call out now, we have to call out. Man, we're more kicking at the face and all, like Mr. Andrew. You know, with the, with, over the years, I've seen Andrew try to, 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 to break some barriers. And, you know, between me and him, we are bridging still now, but I have to tell him, say, I have to give him some pointers because I want him to reach where he reach. And right now, I want to book him side, side and side, make him understand, say, even if you run time, you can still get licking at your face. Next man, we want to try to call out for a long time, and this man uh, take it to my call out. It's Mr. Damage. We are a team. Very serious of a command. See there? Very extreme. Mr. Damage has been calling me out from Vernon, you know, and for the last time we break the transfer case, I broke my shift and we run a 35 second pass. And we win. You win the finals, I got the run out. What back a run there? That run is necessary in 10 second class. So that will be ideal for me. Can't go, Ryan. Hold on, Tim. I love that one. My most memorable, memorable moment. I have to do it over.